Welcome back. You're now watching the political segment of the weekend show. On July 7th, 2019, Nigeria finally signed the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, AFTA. The agreement requires members to remove tariffs from 90% of goods, allowing free access to commodities, goods, and services across the continent. This is the biggest free trade agreement in the entire world. Joining us on today's program to discuss this, we have... We have with us Goje Yahaya, who is an international trade and governance activist. He is the founder of Citizens Business Excellence Foundation. Welcome to the show, Goje. Thank you very much, Fist. We also have with us a seasoned senior economist, um, Paul Azaje of SPM Professionals. Welcome to the weekend show, sir. Yeah, thank you so very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. So I'll start with you, Mr. Paul. Um, this free trade agreement, when it was signed, I was very elated. Uh, all the African countries have been waiting for Nigeria in particular to sign this agreement. And when P President Mohamedou Buhari did that, I thought it was very commendable. However, there's a little barrier that I'm sure uh, will be addressed going forward. The different currencies these African countries have. How are we going to mitigate that uh, factor when doing trade with these different African countries? Now, I think first uh, it might be important for people to understand what Nigeria signed, um, what Nigeria wants to be part of. When we talk about um, Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, what it means is that African countries um, now have opportunity, particularly businesses in Africa, to um, export without necessarily paying tariff, which means competition among African countries would increase. What it means if I if we want to pay an instance in South Africa, we manufacture shoes and sell to Nigerians without necessarily paying tariff, which means Nigerian local producer, we have to do more. You cannot just say that because I produce in Nigeria, therefore buy Ninja or buy Naira. Uh, it's not a single market. The good news here is that Africa is faced with over 1.2 billion people in terms of market, a little below India. India has over 1.3, but Africa is fast because of uh, population growth rate is fast approaching that. Now, the good news for entire Africa, before I go to the issue of currency, is trade among African countries in 2016 was only between 16 to 18 percent. It is projected to grow by more than double of that in 2021 by signing this agreement. Now, what appears to be the bad news in signing this agreement is what are we going to sell to the rest of African countries? Where do you import your, sh your, sh your shirt from, your, your, your fabric from? Nice attire. In Nigeria, they say, you are wearing traditional. I am wearing foreign. But there is nothing foreign. There is nothing traditional. Because where your clothes come from, I can bet with you, is where my clothes come from. Yours is sold in Nigeria. Mine is sold in Nigeria. But where are the jobs? So if it's sold in, say, if your fabric is produced, say, Egypt or South Africa, then it's good news for Africa. But all of these are still coming out from the entire African continent. So what we drive transaction, of course, as she asked me, is the currency. No African sub-regional um, sub, uh, countries have s had uh, single currency. So perhaps that is why Nigeria, among other countries, West Africa was told to go try West African single currency and see how that will be. That we have a lot of positive implication on the entire continent. But countries with huge population, I repeat, countries with huge population, we have to face two options if they are not prepared for this agreement. is either they become import victims or they become export victors. By import victim, you can now consume goods even cheaper than you were consuming them. So woman hair that's relatively expensive is produced in Africa is going to be cheaper because other countries will want to supply to the same market. So people have incentive to consume it more. But if those countries not producing, by all means, they are miserable. So, but while the currency is an important part of the conversation, which um, I feel are some of the issues which should have been addressed first, the next big problem is travel within Africa. Um, so, and the cost of travel and access to fellow African countries to get to South Africa, sometimes it could take you close to a month or eight weeks to get your visa if it's approved. To fly, it's cheaper for me to fly to Switzerland or Geneva than it is for me to fly to the Gambia. So if we are making trade easier, 
but we still have issues with travel within Africa. Access, we don't have an open Africa when it comes to visa restrictions. How does this affect the agreement, Guji? Thank you very much. Now, um, the problem is when you, when you sit down with some of these, um, you know, they call themselves economists or whatever, they try to speak English. While me, I'm coming from the activist angle, I we have to talk about realities on ground. Now, if you look at history, Ni Africa, Nigeria has never had any good record of keeping to agreements, right? Now, Mr. President was being approached, please come and sign the agreement, the AU initiative. This is one of the biggest. This is where it's going to lead the economy in uh, 2020. Well, um, coming to come and sign in the, the, the agreement, are we really prepared? Mr. President, not doing that was a very good, um, very, very good, in a way, it was a good decision. But the issues here is that, um, why did he later sign it? We are not supposed to be political with issues that has to do with you know, the, tr the economy of Nigeria. We're supposed to look at what are the issues on ground. Okay, if you tell me the excuses why he didn't sign it then was because he was trying to go back and prepare himself while this thing would actually fit into the country. Let me explain to you. Nigeria's economy is 405 billion, right? Now, if Nigeria's economy is 405 billion, which is the largest in Africa, and then Nigeria could actually take advantage of this to literally now be the giant of Africa. Because it it's if its SMEs are fine, if the industries are all fine, those are good health, is a good healthy condition for you to now step into the AFC TA, right? But those things uh, within this time, we, they were not even tissued. Up to now, we are still dealing with uh, ministerial lists, we are still dealing with. Which, which comes back to my issue. So yes. we have several issues, and it will take up to, I think, 2022 to get this working and fully ratified. Yes. But as a young businessman, yeah. I want to get my kaftan to another country. I would need to find a way to send it there. Yeah. I may want to go there physically to find out how business is done there. If I don't have that access, if it's going to cost me so much, how is this agreement useful to a young startup, to a young businessman on the street, an average Nigerian? Forget the politics about it, of it. Thank you very much. Now, if you look at the space, the trade space within itself, there are the policies, there are agencies, government agencies, there are all of the components around it. But what I'm trying to make you understand is that, the, start with the government agencies. You know, the government agencies, there was this policy that they should always, Nigerians should always wear made in Nigeria twice every week. But I don't know in the ministries whether that is still happening today. And then you look at it holistically, you understand? We are not prepared to do that. The mi ministries are lagging. Let me talk to you this, let me put to you this way. We, we, we trade with other countries. This is not the first agreement they have in Agua. US wants to actually trade with us. Africa, they step to us. They make one step forward to us. Please, I want to make trade with you. Let's come to the table. Agua, this is 10, over 10 years. We have not benefited from it. Do you understand? And these ministries, they keep on doing something that is just one-sided, just to have cheap political, you know, credit. Yeah, I want to understand you clearly. Are yes. you saying that the president should not have signed after? What I'm, all I'm saying is that the president needed to have fast tra create something to just fast track to make sure that we have we fit into it. If not, so we will just be another junk because he, I'm an investor. I have money, and this is Afri This is uh, Nigeria. I want to come and spend my money, invest my money, because I know I'm going to get something back. But what happens when the whole system here is not developed enough to meet it? So you're actually signing a suicide deal mm. in a way. We should have been better prepared. Yes. We should have had better policies in place. Uh, Mr. Paul, let me bring you in here. In 2016, I was in Kenya. I interviewed the chairman of the Kenya um, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we were talking about intra-Africa trade, what we're talking about today. And he said very clear to me, clearly to me that intra-Africa trade would literally revolutionize Africa. But today I'm thinking, yes, it's good that the president signed the AFTA agreement. Nonetheless, how ready are we to benefit from this? As you said earlier on, uh, we need to be a producing nation. We need to produce more than extractive minerals, uh, oil, gas, uh, 
we know gold and so on and so forth. All the African countries are producing shoes, uh, clothes, um, art, in fact, and exporting it to the rest of the world. How then do we better, as Andy said, we, we have till 2022 to implement this. How then do we better prepare ourselves as a nation to be able to benefit from the positives of this agreement? And I'll also add here, made in Abba shoes are exported to the rest of the world. Um, I don't know about their finishing. How would that boost that SME industry from Abba State, from Abia State? Yeah, yeah, thank you for your question once again. You see, countries that work is because people work. People don't work um, from their lives. People work at work. When you look at um, Africa Continental Free Area, I mean, Free Trade Agreement or Free Area Free Trade Area, area. Agreement, mm -hmm. something is very important. By 2020, we're going to be having countries that will benefit. We must have the following five. The following five of them. Number one is power supply to boost manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So are we prepared? The question is, do we have power supply to boost manufacturing? Number two, countries that will grow must have removed others to growth. What are the others to growth? Two of them, they about five again, but because of time, two of them I will mention is infrastructure and corruption. When you remove those two, um, among other ones that are there, then you are getting closer to getting prepared. Number three is education. It was reported that Nigeria has 13.5 million people out of school children. In fact, the new UN report shows that one out of two children in Africa that just signed agreement by, 30, 30, by 2030, one out of two, out, out of two that is 50%, will be out of school. They will not even finish basic school, which you call primary school in Nigeria. Number three is health. Number four. Number four, I beg your mm -hmm. pardon, is health. How prepared are we? Because how do you build labor? We, remember, it's not just free movement of good. It's also free movement of labor. So Nigeria wants to um, exchange labor that will go to other African yeah. countries and take over some sort. Of course, the name is there, Giant of Africa. But how healthy is our people? We, somebody come from Rwanda and say he wants to come for medical service in Nigeria. Because that's what guarantees revenue for us at the end of the day. The last part is... How do we build structural transformation, structural development? And this will not be conversation around how oh, we, 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 we want to use, um, um, say, low-hanging fruit. Let's look for, but things that have systems, that have structure, more like corporate governance of some sort for our nation. Now, if we don't do this, yeah, we'll be there in the mix. There will be growth. Nigeria is currently 2.01%, approximately 2% 2, 2 GDP growth rate. We might have 3% GDP growth rate in the midst of things falling. But that is not how you're going to benefit from this. How you benefit from this is countries in Africa want to drive Toyota. What will we do as a country? We put these five things in place such that they go to me and set up factory there. Who will we get the job? The job will be there. The job will be here. The investment will come from there. Now, this is how you know if Nigeria is prepared or not. Be to answer your question, I mean, straightforward. For every one era you earn, for every one era you win, you spend them in four ways. One is marginal propensity to consume. That is part of that money you spend on consumption to buy local products. Number two is marginal propensity to save. Part of that money that you put in your bank account to save for future reasons. Number three is marginal rate of taxation. That part of that money you spend to pay taxes. And last part is marginal propensity to import. Now, let's access ourselves in the studio this morning. From my friend, high glasses, it's not made in Nigeria. It's wristwatch, not made in Nigeria. If his name is Tokumbo, he's not also himself, he's not made in Nigeria. <laughs> because what is common in our generation, we are young people here, is we want our wives to go and give birth abroad and import our children back to our country. Because of marginal propensity to import is high. So a country that has high tendency to import, sign agreement that you can flood my market without necessarily putting in place those five fundamentals that guarantee us for people to come to a place to come develop, to come invest, to bring the best of labor, to train our people so that indeed we can become countries that every other country in Africa uh, we envy and come, come to a place. Well, we do have some positives. Like I said, the Made in Abba, we uh, export shoes and garments to the rest of the African countries already. I'm going to get that. How do we supplicate on that? How do we ensure that that is driving 
from henceforth this African free trade area agreement that we've just signed? How do we ensure that this is at the forefront of what Nigeria... I'm going to get there. You mentioned a critical point called AGUA. AGUA is that agreement that Nigeria has with America for us to export without the same tariff. What we just signed among African countries is going to be closing uh, very soon. But Nigeria has benefited less than 20% yeah. from that. Why? Because standardization. There was a time we exported yam. Yam were returned back to shores because we, didn't, we could not standardize. Mm. Government and private sector have a lot to do in getting country developed. Prayers alone, prayers alone don't develop countries. Prayers and hard work. People work at work. Now, if you see an organization that is growing, it is not that they are not praying. You can fast for 30 days if you like. You can go to mosque all, the, all your time if you like. If you don't work at work, you will simply have flat zero. You simply have zero. See, countries where they don't pray as such. Recent research shows that countries that praise the most have highest unemployment. Countries that pray least but work more have highest employment rate. You see, prayer is very important. I want people to pray, but I also want, more importantly, people to work to support their prayer. Because you will show me your faith by your works. Mm -hmm. You're not going to show me now your faith. Now to answer my by, question. By, about, so, mm -hmm. so, so the question now is, how do we encourage Abba in Abia State? How do we encourage? Now, before you encourage Abba, how do we even build bond so that more job is created? Because for me, at the end of the day, it's job, job, job. Prosperity, prosperity to bring people out of poverty so that the vision of President Buari, 100 million people out of poverty in mm -hmm. 10 years, we come through. So, Koto, Northwest Nigeria has the largest leather deposit in the whole of Africa. Aba has largest number of youth that could manufacture shoes in the whole of Africa. Why can Sokoto export, quote and unquote, internally within the same country, go to Aba and Aba manufacturers? Instead of us preaching things that separate us. What are things that unifies us? Things that makes us to be the same. Now, where are these countries? Aba can now be supported by policies of government, by giving perhaps relative power, I mean constant power supply and financial support and also regulatory system for what that we export to the rest of Africans. In fact, if you cannot say it's not, it's not of standard in Europe, it will be of standard in Rwanda. It will be of standard in Kenya. It will be of standard in South Africa, of standard in Egypt. Then Nigeria from there could say we want to provide shoes for every African child or for every African living. From Abaste. Now, what can we, for MBSA, I beg your pardon, what can we repeat from shoes? Do we want to do the same for tomatoes? Do we want to preserve tomatoes? So, this is how things work. And you see, what we just said is easy to say, but it's a lot of work. Um, so, people will be there <laughs> morning and evening to ensure that Abba becomes pride of the country. Mm -hmm. The same way Sokoto will become pride of the country. Okay, so Not Paul, just for uh, us <laughs> to assume that it's going to work for us overnight, or because we have had independence since 1960, therefore we are due to our development. So it doesn't but, work but, but the issue with this, um, in, in theory and even in practice, is applicable. But the issue with this is that one of the reasons why the trade um, unions and the likes fought against Nigeria signing, because we would have signed in the first instance. Yeah is the fact that Nigeria has the largest economy in Africa. We have the population. So all the other African countries see Nigeria as the target, where they want to come and sell in, mm -hmm. where they want to come and make their money that from. We here being Nigerians are saying, how can we sell to the rest of the world? But they want to come and take this market share. They want to come and eat from this money from us. And so what now applies is that someone from another African country can buy bits and pieces of a car from Japan, ship it to their country, put it together, put a new brand name, and drive it straight to Nigeria because oh. they have those, we have that agreement. So this is the practicality of what the rest of Africa says, which is why trade unions in Nigeria was fighting um, against this to be signed earlier. But we all knew it was going to be signed at some point. Goje, how can Nigeria be protected with this agreement? Well, I'm going to narrow and expand this so that we all understand what is happening. More from a solution. Yes. Based you see, if you it. want to go and visit some of these beautiful stories they say about it, the growth, the programs, do whatever, you'll be overwhelmed and you'll be taken off your feet. But let's always be realist and tell ourselves the truth. Our neighbors here in Ghana, if you've been to Ghana, if you've looked at their activities in the border, it is strict. If you give a Ghana, Ghanaian police money, you would use it on you. They are strict in their borders. So their economy is growing gradually with the right indices. 
Do you understand? Economists like them that speak so many English will tell you GDP, GDP. Our GDP is, according to some of my friends at the UN corridor, they say Nigeria doesn't have good integrity in terms of statistics because the economy uh, readings you use, the whatever you use, is just to make things flow in the right way, not actually to define what is the present situation. Now, let's, let me move because I actually worked with NQI, National Quality Infrastructure of the EU funded project, UNIDO, blah, blah, blah. And we're able to liaise with some of the agencies, listening to some of the mandate of the agencies to, to how we came to conduct of excellence, export control strategy, Nina as the agencies and whatever. And I'm, I'm able to have a real life, you know, test of what is happening in the space. How can Nigeria be protected with this agreement? Good. You because see, that's what we want to know. Yes, the, the, the protection you're going to get here, it's very, very simple. We should be sincere about we being into it. Now, um, he, the border, there's what called transborder economy, right? We will make money if our border is actually taken through the right processes. If we don't politicize our border security, if we don't allow corruption to come into our border security, most of all these one, two, three things are the things that are causing issues. We, we neglected them, but those are the, uh, you know, the, the things that we should put them on emergency, on, on, you know, that we should treat on them. If our borders are the way they are, not as our small countries like Ghana, then we co okay, look at the, the AFCD agreement that was signed. Do you know that uh, Nigeria never bidded for it? Ghana bidded for it. Why did they bid? Because they were able to use good governance metrics, things like uh, African uh, peer review, review mechanism to check out, okay, what is their governance, what they are happening. Because we only talk because we are giants. But when you look at the indices of which you check out growth and which you check out exports, we are, we are nowhere to be found, which makes us sit back and just put our hand and say, where is Nigeria going to? Because just as you, 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 you smartly said, we are losing on an integral level. If we have lost in the past six years and already we have attack, this is an alarm from West African countries because we just sold ourselves. Because if we, we open ourselves in the market, we have disgraced ourselves. We are not ready to come. We are saying, okay, come and actually crush our economy. Yeah, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I see the cons that you speak about, but I also wonder if you're not taking into cognizance the positives. For example, our creative industry. Our artists, our movies are watched around the world. I've been to several African countries, and when I just turn on the TV, I'm watching Nigerian like movies. Nigeria. <laughs> they are obsessed with Nigerian movies. And most of this uh, remuneration is not being sent back to us in Nigeria because they are entering these countries illegally. There is no formal procedure sure. for our artists, our actors, to earn revenue on these movies that people are enjoying, other Africans are enjoying, because there is no formal way for them to monetize this, actually producing the movies and, um, and franchising it to these different African countries. So don't you believe, or do you understand that this agreement now um, opens an opportunity for us to formalize the creative industry, for us to formalize trade amongst Africans? And yes, we need to fix the fundamentals. We need to fix the basics, our integrity, fight corruption, put in these five indices that um, uh, the economist Paul has talked about we need to do that. But in the meantime, this agreement is very important so we can even start uh, um, generating revenue for the country. Do you agree with this? I, I totally agree with you in the real sense of it. But my argument is just simple. Um, as Nigeria, in my, as, a, as, as also an activist, I have this one of my popular quotes. I say that the, the international trade and governance of Nigeria is a global competition. It's not a national, it's not a tribal issue. So Nigeria should come as a block to look at how we could sort out these issues. But down to it, what I want to make you understand that the sincerity of getting it is going to be zero. I would want you to hold, get a date with me on today. This is 7th July, right? 27th? No, this is um, 3rd of August. 3rd of, of August. 3rd of August. Yes. OK, this is 3rd of August. And um, sorry, I was trying to work on some other, but you see, the, the issue is there is that if you, I'll hold you again, you say that the insincerity for actually government to move it to be a political activity into the private sector and actually giving them time to, you know, relate with themselves will actually give us results. Paul. 
Well, uh, I, I think there's a lot of positivity also in the, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. I haven't been sure what Nigeria should have done. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the next best time to plant is now. Unfortunately, activism don't build the economy. I would really rather me criticize, provoke people to mm -hmm. do the right thing, but in itself, find it very difficult to build the economy. Now, there's going to be a lot of revenue coming to Nigeria, just to mention, coming from, um, say, entertainment industry or creative industry. And beyond that, um, you would see more of activity of the richest black man uh, living, going to other African countries, investing, smart, smart investors. You would also see some manufacturers in Nigeria who believe perhaps Nigeria really don't want to buy their product because we're obsessed with buying foreign products and the narrative that I've sold here a long time. There are other African countries that actually want to buy Nigerians' black soap. They want to buy so many things produced in Nigeria. Now, that would have been mega if Nigeria created opportunity for economies of scale, that scale production, that is to produce in large scale. I understand government seems to love small businesses. Nothing is wrong with that. But countries that are great in the world, small businesses employ people, but large businesses build economies. Now, small businesses, we employ one, two. But when you have two, five, 10, 15 multinationals, uh, in a country, you see the kind of inflow of, of finance coming to those multinationals. Even banks will be comfortable lending to multinational rather than lending to small businesses. So, mm. so if we have those fundamentals, they would have done more. But the truth is, when you have a number of persons coming together and understood why they've signed the agreement, Nigeria would benefit in some ways. But what I'm saying, what I mentioned earlier, is that I would have loved it if Nigeria had benefited more. Because if you check America, the largest country in North America has the largest economy and has, if you like it, one of the lowest unemployment rate. Go to yeah. China, in Asia, largest economy, largest politics, most inflation, largest infrastructure in the whole of Asia. Mm. Go to Europe, Germany has the same, largest economy, largest population, largest infrastructure. Come to Nigeria, largest economy, largest population, but when it comes to poverty, all other countries that led mm. in the continent, they've had lowest, they were not having the largest poverty rate. But in Nigeria, we seem to have it. Why? Because if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Mm. If you don't fix the foundation, talking will not solve it. Tribal stuff will not solve it. Is activism will not solve it. You just have to do what you need to do. Would you also attribute this to the fact that we have also one of the lowest rates of high net worth individuals. So in other countries that have the largest economies, you see millions of high net worth individuals. Yeah. But in Nigeria, we have maybe... It's, it's a handful. Less than a yeah. percent it's of the a population. Philosophy. philosophy here believes that when you see rich people, there's false impression, oh, they are corrupt. I am not saying people are not corrupt. I'm also saying that people who built were genuinely. <laughs> see, when you country like <laughs> Singapore, many of them were poor at some point. But with the support of Lin Kuan Yew and his team, and his team, and his team, right team, what happened to Lin Kuan Yew's country? Became average person in Singapore, 80 million in dollars. You know what that means in Nigeria? 360 million naira worth. If somebody has that, that is just $1 million. Oh, he has too much money. He'll be scared to live in some part of South, South, Southwest, Southeast, Northwest, North Central, and Northeast Nigeria because he could be kidnapped. So fundamentals are that you see, when you discuss microeconomics, it takes you back to macro, the economy at large. So if, for, for you to, and if you don't solve some of these issues, security, name it power, name it, it will come back to us. <sighs> That's the real issue. With buttresses, what you were exactly. saying about there, fixing there's an the agreement. Yes. Yes. Fixing. Wait, you see, I, yes. I actually congratulate the government. I was part of the ERGP economic re, re, uh, group. Growth and Yes. It was about people coming together, bring out the projects they have that, would, that is actually important in Nigeria. And then government actually look at, okay, what power would you need? These uh, companies, where are they? How can we channel the electricity? Mm. How can we make sure? Fine, but I want him to understand what I'm trying to say. In the past few years. In 30 seconds. Please. Yes. In the past few years, how many industries have crushed away? Mm. Why do they crush away? We have government. We have economists. Why have they gone? Why are we just having just a few trying to dictate a few things? Other people can't do anything. You talked about Nigerians enjoying from it. Produce here and, you know, it's and then we export it. 
That's the issue that I want him to understand. Nigeria should have maybe say, okay, look at things like insolvency, right? Insolvency is like meeting up the whole business. Why are the businesses folding? If we have, uh, for instance, um, 10 businesses that have folded up in the last uh, few years, call them to the table. What do you need? And put them, if it is a loan, you for have to get away from them. Which is the advantage, I'm sorry, we'll close with this. The advantage of this agreement is that those businesses that can't thrive in Nigeria can now go anywhere Elsewhere. else in yes. Africa and thrive. And so this creates a great window of opportunity for exactly. Nigerians who are some of the most innovative people in the world to be able to carry their trade and craft to other places with ease of doing business across the continent. Then it creates more opportunity because the money still trickles down to Nigeria. If you check out the number of um, inflow of cash from the diaspora. And so I think they, it all works together. Mm -hmm. And like Osasua so said, there are a, a couple of positives to it. To it also. as well. That's a fine place to leave it. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Paul, thank you so much for your time. The conversation continues on our social media pages at Weekend Show NG on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll take a break right now when we return. More on the Weekend Show. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>